This episode starts with the pop-up headlights. As shown in the intro video, they didn't want to stay open. Obviously, driving without light is fairly dangerous, so it was the first thing I had to fix. Here you can see me remove the headlights to gain access to the wiring and the motors for troubleshooting. I also had to remove the battery and the coolant overflow, because otherwise my hands wouldn't fit in the space tight lip motor connectors were to disconnect them. Now here is how the headlight motors actually work. There's a switch inside the light switch. It gets fed with 12 volt and has two signal wires which carry 12 volt depending on the headlamps are on or off. Then we have the motor that lifts the headlights. It's simply a geared DC motor that on the first 180 degrees of its turn lifts the headlights and on the other 180 degrees of its turn lowers them back down. Connected to the positive terminal of the motor is a relay and a limit switch. The relay gets 12 volts from the retraction fuse and it switches those 12 volts on or off for the motor. It is switched by the signal wires through the limit switch, basically. If the light is on, the yellow signal wire gets 12 volt. That activates the relay and the motor turns 180 degrees. Now when the light is turned off, the blue wire gets 12 volt, activating the release again and turning the motor another 180 degrees. In my case, the motor just keeps on turning as soon as the light is on. And so the headlights go up and down and up and down and up and down. Now the first thing to think is that the limit switch is defect, right? But here's a weird thing. If I remove the retraction fuse, which should cut the power to the motor completely, the headlights will stay open if I pull the fuse while they are on their opening position. But as soon as I turn the lights off, the headlights will still close, even though the motor isn't supposed to be getting any power. That got me thinking. So I measured the voltage after the fuse and I got 12 volts, even though this wire isn't connected to any power. Since the motors stay open when the light is on and the fuse removed, and closed when the light is off and the fuse in, and there are only 12 volts on the wire if the light are off, this leaves only one conclusion. So there is a short between the blue and the red wire. That means if the lights are turned on, the fuse is in, the blue and the yellow wire have 12 volts, so as soon as the motor hits the opening limit, it gets the signal to close and moves to the closing limit and so on. That also means that if I remove the retraction fuse, the retro wire still gets 12 volts through the blue wire if the lights are turned off, thus closing the headlights even though the fuse is pulled. So now I have everything apart right here and the only uh, part of the wiring harness where both uh, cables are in is right here from this part right there all the way underneath here to there the other side so right there because the plus 12 volts for the retraction uh, fuse go right through here to this right there so back there they aren't together they are only together right here so it would be very easy to find once I think but the only only part where it the wiring harness is uh, not inside any kind of wiring loom or uh, other isolation is right here in the corner and it also was rubbing right here but as you can see right there is the white black white and right there is a the black blue wire and I can't see any damage to them right here so that's the only only part where the wiring harness is. So right here you can see it's in a plastic uh, shroud thingy and doesn't look as if there were any problems there and it's never no bare cables nowhere so I have to look closer right there. I searched and measured and looked for quite a while, but I didn't find the part in the wiring where the short was. There was no obvious damage from the outside on any of the exposed parts, also there was no obvious damage on the parts wrapping with isolating tape. So I could have removed all the tape or unbolted the whole front end to remove the part of the wiring harness to inspect it closely, but I decided against that and just put in a new wire from the retraction fuse to each of the motors. I think it's highly unlikely that a part of the short 
from the blue wire will come in contact with anything else, so it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't feed its 12 volt into the retro wire again. So here you can see me cutting, soldering and isolating that wire. I use a split screen method because the footage is in very low resolution and this way I can kinda salvage it. that the lights are actually working as they should, I bolted it all back together. I don't have any footage of that because of the SD card problem. But here are the finishing touches. I put the plastic covers back on the lights. I previously spray painted them in fresh matte black so they look awesome. But it didn't show on camera as well. With all that out of the way, I can actually go on and do some things purely to enhance the visual appearance of the car. The first thing was the missing center armrest. Lucky me I got a parts car and lucky me I had an armrest in perfect condition. But my new probe has a partially black interior painted by the previous owner and my parts probe is all original grey. So I took a bit of matte black spray paint and painted the plastic parts of the armrest. It actually turned out really great. So I painted all the plastic pieces black to match the interior that was already painted black by the previous owner. So here it is, the uh, actual leather or fake leather piece I left in grey because the seats are also grey and this handle is grey so I think it will fit nice and I don't have a leather die at the moment. So now this has to go on there and all the parts needed are there.
Next thing I wanted to get done are the side skirts. I'm not entirely sure why the previous owner removed them from the car, but as I bought it they were in the trunk. Also the front pieces of the side skirts were missing, but again lucky me has a parts car. There are metal supports for the side skirts on the car and the side skirts are mounted to them, the fenders and the runners and below the door. There are quite a lot of mounting points. Now originally they would have been mounted with these little plastic things. You put the outer part in the hole, push the inner part in and they lock into place. By unscrewing the inner part, the outer part should be unlocked again, in theory. Sadly, once they are on there for a while and dirt and grime found its way, there is no way they can be removed without brute force. So it's obvious I don't like them and I won't use them. Instead I just use some bolts. They won't disturb the visual appearance too much. So there were a few plastic clips missing and I maybe should have used some foam strips to seal the side skirts where they touch the metal. But the paint isn't really worth saving and the side skirts are open to the lower side so water that goes in will just run out. After all, it made a whole lot of a difference in the appearance of the car and it finally is a proper probe again. For the final touches of this episode, there is this little trim piece missing in the door. It looks ugly. So I just grabbed one from the past car and world of a difference. On that note. Boy, that was a lot of editing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.